the fine C, we just do the max plus the min and divided by two. So remember, mapping notation is probably the best way to graph a, a uh, sinusoidal function uh, when looking at a graph, okay? But what we're gonna do now is we are going to dive into word problems that involve sinusoidal functions. So based off a word problem, we're gonna have to graph it and come up with an equation for that function. So our first example for number one. So we have the alternating half daily cycles of the rise and fall of the oceans are called tides. Uh, tides in one section of the Bay of Fundy uh, caused the water level to rise six meters above mean sea level and drop six meters below sea level. Uh, the tide completes one cycle every 12 hours, assuming the height of the water with respect to the mean sea level to be modeled by a sine function. So remember, we're not looking at a cosine. We are looking at a sine function this time. So sometimes the questions will give you what type of function uh, it wants you to focus on. So we want to draw a graph for a 24-hour period and determine the equation that models this situation. So based off this word problem, what can we assume about the equation of the axis? Zero. Zero. So C is equal to zero, okay? So remember that's the max plus the min divided by two. So what is our max height in this question? 6 Positive 6.5 meters. And what is the minimum? Negative 6.5 meters, which is why our C is zero because 6.5 plus negative 6.5 gives us zero. Now, what would our amplitude be? Yep. So it'd be 6.5 minus negative 6.5 over 2, which is equal to 13 divided by 2, which is equal to 6.5. So we have our A and our C. So what other information is given to us in this graph? Yeah, you're right. So the period takes what? So one cycle means a period. So our period is 12. So how would we find our K value? How would we find our K value? 12 12 is equal to 2 pi over k, cross multiply, you get k is equal to 2 pi over 12, and what is k equal? Pi over 6. And now we just need to look at our critical intervals. So what was our period? No, no, our period. 12, so we take one over four times 12, and that gives us three. So we're gonna be dividing each section or each, I guess, box in the x-axis into three. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So what would our sine function look like based off the information that we are given? Sorry, we did. What would our equation be? What's our K? 
times pi over 6x. <clears throat> but what do we have to do? What is left in the question? It wants us to do that. <laughs> It wants us to drop, right? <clears throat> so in a 24-hour period, so we're just going to focus on the key points, uh, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, okay? Uh, what would our first point be? What is sine at 0 all the time? And now we can't really use mapping notation for this. Okay, so now we're just gonna have to sub in the values three, six, nine, twelve, and so on. So what would our well if we sub in three will just be pi over two. What's sign of pi over two? So let's take Let's so take f at 3 is equal to 6.5 times sine of pi over 6 times 3, which is equal to 6.5 times sine of pi over 2. So what would our y value be? So sine of pi over 2 is 1. Okay. What's 1 times 6.5? For this one, no. So when graphing, uh, what did it give you when you put sine of pi over two, like zero point eight? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so when you're graphing these functions, put your calculator back into degrees. You only really need the radian button when you're when you want to find the terminal arm and the acute angle. So our next value is 6. So we want to sub in 6 for x. So here we got f at 6, which is equal to 6.5 times sine of pi over 6 times 6. And what does the bracket simplify into? Uh, so sine of pi. 0, 0 times 6.5 is 0. And now based off of this pattern, what would our x value at 9, what would it give us? Negative 6.5, back to 0. So once you get like, the first four points going, you start noticing the pattern, you can just pick it up. So how did that question sound easy? And why did I have to go all the way to 24? Yeah, because it asked. It said for a 24 hour period. And our interval was in three hours, so we just had to end up at 24. So I'm just going to do the last question because we have time. So how many of you hated the Ferris wheel questions and grade 11 functions? You never got them right? Yeah. Well, there's more Ferris wheel questions in grade 12. So, you have, like, these things are going to hunt you. You're going to go to a Ferris wheel and you're going to be like, I don't even want to go on this thing. <laughs> so, you have a carnival Ferris wheel with a radius of 7 meters. Oh, let's see. Did you guys like the Ferris wheel questions, uh, cohort B and C in grade 11? Everyone hates them. So a carnival Ferris wheel with a radius of seven meters makes one complete revolution every 16 seconds. The bottom of the wheel is 1.5 meters above the ground. Uh, we wanna draw a graph to show how a person's height above the ground varies with time. 
starting when the person gets on the Ferris wheel and then determine the equation that models this situation. So we have to label some things first. What's the two easiest things that we can label? So the radius is going to be seven. And what else do we label? The height from the bottom of the wheel to the ground. So this is 1.5 meters. Okay. So <clears throat> what would our minimum height be for the Ferris wheel? 1.5 meters. And what would our maximum height be? 15.5 meters, because you're just taking so this is a 8.5. So you're just taking 8.5 and adding 7 onto it to get your maximum value, which will be reached at 15.5 meters. So what can we consider 8.5 meters to be? What value in the equation? So that would be our C value. So let's just label it on the graph first. So we have 8.5 which is over here, and that would be our C value. So we have our C, which is 8.5. So we have that part so far. Now we need our A value, our amplitude. How do we find out what our amplitude is again? Max minus min. Remember, because the equation of the axis, you're finding the average, so you add them. Uh, the amplitude, you're finding the difference. So we have 15.5 minus 1.5, absolute value, divided by 2. So we got 14 over 2, which is equal to 7. So we have our C value is 8.5. And our A value is 7. What is our period? Period is equal to 16 seconds. So now we have to find our K, which is 16, is equal to 2 pi divided by K. And all we have to do is cross multiply. So we got K is equal to 2 pi over 16. And what does that simplify into? Pi over, over 8. So now we need to take our critical interval. Okay. So our critical interval in this case, what was our period? 16, 16 times 1 over 4. And that gives us? So we're going to be dividing the Ferris wheel up into four second intervals. Four, eight, 12, 16. So this is going to be 1.5 right here. And the top one is going to be 15.5. Okay, so we have our C, we have our A, we have our K, all right? So the first thing we need to do is to fit, plot our first point. So when you get on a Ferris wheel, at what height are you getting on it? So the minimum, right? So just based off of that, what function would be the easiest to come up with an equation for? Yeah, close with the reflection. That would be the easiest thing to do. Why would making it a sign graph be 
and then I guess more tedious or harder. Yeah, so you would have to shift it yeah. units to the right. So we're going to use what Sarah said. We're going to use cos. So it'd be y is equal to negative 7 cos of power 8 plus 8.5. So if we were to graph this for one full cycle, what would our next point be? Remember critical intervals every four seconds. So if at zero gives us the minimum, at the next four seconds, what would it reach? So it would reach our axis. And then it would go to But now, let's try to see if we can come up with a sine function. So sine has to start at the equation of the axis, okay? At what time does the graph hit the equation of the axis first? Four seconds. And based off the origin, are we going to four seconds to the right or to the left? To the right. So our sine function is just gonna be y is equal to seven cos. Sine, sorry. sorry. Seven times sine of pi over eight times x minus four plus eight point five. If you were to put in the same x values for both equations, you would get the same exact y value back. So do you guys like first little questions now? Yeah. Is it easier now? Or, I don't know how your teacher explained it last year. I have no idea, but I tried the best. I don't even think I did one last year. No? Nope. Maybe like one. And the class was like, I, I can't do this. So yeah, so just focus on the information given, uh, which is usually your C value and your A value that you're going to be given first, and your like 100% of the time you're going to be given the period. Okay, and after that, if it doesn't specifically tell you in the question to use the sine or cosine, uh, you can pick either or, or you can write both. I mean, I'm not going to give you extra marks if you write both, but just pick one or the other. What are we doing the rest of the week? Uh, trig identities. <clears throat> so, uh, cohort B and C, do you guys still hate Ferris wheel questions? Jose is still a hater. James is still a hater. Uh, Joseph's the only one who's not a hater. So we're good. <laughs> 